it's always when you least expect it that it happens. The movie you're watching draws you in. You're at the edge of your seat, wondering what will happen next. And then you see it. A pair of sunglasses. Your eyes are drawn to the shaded lenses that obscure the actor's eyes. And that's when you realize that you've been drawn out of the movie. In many cases, sunglasses appearing in movies and television is perfectly fine. No one bats an eyelid when Kendall Roy shows up in a scene of succession sporting a pair of Jacques Marie Marges, nor when Barbie first appears like a shade-rocking monolith. Tony Stark would look wrong without his streamlined aviators, and Audrey Hepburn in Breakfast at Tiffany's wouldn't be the same without her iconic pair of Manhattans. In some other cases, however, Sunglasses appear inexplicably anachronistic, like they don't belong there at all. The rise of Michael Corleone is inevitable. In The Godfather, his fate is about to be realized in the style of a Greek tragedy. In the climax of the movie, a traitor in Corleone's ranks is revealed. And even though the traitor doesn't realize he's been found out, the audience knows, and the audience is waiting for Michael to seal his fate by double-crossing the traitor. It's a quietly momentous moment. And that's when he shows up. Don't make it his own business. I always liked him. He understands that. Excuse me, sir. The man wearing sunglasses. The Godfather draws the audience in like a Renaissance painting. Whether we're seeing a lively wedding, the Sicilian countryside, or dimly lit offices. Then, this guy shows up with Ray-Ban Wayfarer sunglasses. In an otherwise painterly movie, it's like seeing a painting smeared with tomato soup, or a picture of the Queen in shades, or even Gandalf giving you the side eye wearing a futuristic pair. It doesn't look right. But why? What's the reason behind this? Even though sunglasses as we know them are a relatively recent invention, variations of the idea have been around for quite some time. Going back to classical antiquity, Pliny the Elder mentions in his Natural History how Emperor Nero watched gladiatorial games through emerald gemstones to reduce the flare of the sun. Less anecdotal precursors to our modern shades include snow goggles used by the Inuits to avoid snow blindness, as well as the glasses made of green-tinted Murano glass that was used by gondoliers on sunny days in late 18th century Venice. During the 19th century, green-tinted spectacles turned into quite the craze and they are mentioned several times, amongst others in the works of Edgar Allan Poe, where they often functioned as a signifier of high class. A well-known figure who rocked green-tinted shades was the romantic poet William Wordsworth, whose bad eyesight made him sensitive to bright lights. Sunglasses rose to mainstream popularity in the 1920s, when movie stars were seen wearing them in public. It was only at the end of that decade that modern mass-produced sunglasses were introduced by Foster Grant. Today, Foster Grant is owned by the Italian corporation Essilor Luxottica, which also owns, amongst others, the brands Ray-Ban, Oakley, and Oliver Peoples. Essilor Luxottica has a yearly revenue of more than $20 billion, hinting at the fact that sunglasses are so common today that their presence is never even questioned. They're a part of daily life, they can be a useful accessory, and they can be a symbol of luxury. You know what? I left my wallet in the car. I'll catch you next time. In some cases, their function as protection against bright lights might even be secondary to their aesthetic and socio-cultural value. Since The Godfather takes place in the late 1940s, the presence of fashionable sunglasses isn't in any way anachronistic. It doesn't break with history in the same way as, for example, Django Unchained does. However cool Jamie Foxx looks wearing his round shades, fashionable sunglasses weren't a thing at that time. But historicity isn't the main factor here. In Django Unchained, sunglasses are intentionally anachronistic, and even though it raises a few eyebrows, it's an artistic choice Tarantino can get away with. The bizarre thing is that sunglasses most often look out of place in cases where their presence isn't necessarily unlikely. Why do sunglasses feel so anachronistic even when they're not? To answer this question, we first need to understand the role of sunglasses in costume design. 
In 12th century China, glasses made of smoky quartz were worn by judges, not to shield their eyes from the sun, but to obscure their emotions from the people they were judging. In the film adaptation of American Psycho, we're shown a character study of a man who hides behind a veil of confidence to obscure his deep insecurities and fear of standing out. These suppressed fears manifest themselves as fantasies of an extreme violent and sexual nature. After an implied murder the night before, we see Patrick Bateman in his office doing a crossword, his eyes obscured behind a pair of large, dark sunglasses. His eyes are only barely visible through the shaded lenses. His eyes are quite literally shielded from the audience as well as from the other characters. An often used description in literature is the phrase, the smile never reached their eyes. There are many cliches focusing on precisely the eyes, such as, the eyes are the windows to the soul. Common to all is the focus on the eyes as the key to a person's true emotions. The importance of eyes to read a person's feelings is not to be understated. And in this scene with Patrick Bateman, he's literally keeping his eyes locked away, forcing his secretary, as well as the audience, to take his pretend cheerfulness at face value. In this case, the sunglasses work as a metaphor for Patrick Bateman's personality. They represent his desire to be someone he's not, his need to hide behind a veil of sameness that makes him virtually indistinguishable from the other men in his social circle, where you can only make an impression with the quality of your equality. In the 2021 movie, The Batman, sunglasses feature in a similar way. Bruce Wayne is a troubled soul, his trauma and deep sense of injustice manifesting themselves as the Batman, his alter ego. But Batman bleeds into Bruce Wayne, the border between the two personas becoming blurred. The sunglasses he wears inside his penthouse mansion functions as a representation of the blurred lines between Batman and Bruce Wayne. In both of these cases, sunglasses represent an escape from the need to show true emotions. Their primary function is as a disguise, hiding the true self behind tinted glass. Sunglasses therefore result in a kind of uncanny valley effect, where the face we're shown doesn't look quite right, as if a crucial part of it is missing. When consciously used in this way, sunglasses underlines the personalities and behaviors of the characters wearing them. A pair of shades are not a bombastic and complicated piece of costume design. However, when used correctly, they're quietly important like the cherry on top that you don't think about, but would be missed if it wasn't there. And in some cases, they might even be just that subtle touch that makes a character appear inhuman. One of the most iconic uses of sunglasses in cinema is in the 1961 film Breakfast at Tiffany's. The enigmatic socialite Holly, portrayed by Audrey Hepburn, craves attention, while she at the same time doesn't let people get too close to her. She even treats her own cat with apparent indifference. Throughout the movie, she dons a large pair of Manhattan sunglasses. They're large, elegant, and even though they don't totally obscure her eyes, they do hint at the conflict between a need for attention and the fear of letting someone get too close to her. An iconic image from the film shows Holly gazing over the rim of her glasses as if she needs to see the world the way it really is in order to truly believe it. When viewed through the lenses of sunglasses, the world is, after all, changed for good and for ill. Perhaps the world is easier to deal with when you view it through a lens, as if you're watching a movie. But that implies an emotional distance from the events unfolding, like the wearer of the sunglasses is communicating to the audience that I don't belong here. Perhaps this is why Neo dons his iconic sunglasses after his awakening. He's emotionally detached from the world because he knows it the way it really is. The sunglasses aren't an escape. The escape has already occurred. The sunglasses are instead a symbol of his new reality, a barrier that separates him from the illusion he once believed to be true. They signify his transition from a life of ignorance to one of enlightened detachment, a visual cue that he now operates under a different set of rules in a world that is no longer familiar. What does all of this have to do with the strange, anachronistic effect sunglasses have in certain instances? It all comes down to the dual nature of sunglasses as both a practical item and a potent symbol. In cinema, every detail on screen is, 
or should be, a choice that contributes to the story and the characterization. Sunglasses, while seemingly trivial, can disrupt the delicate balance of a film's visual and narrative cohesion when they clash with the established time period or character portrayal. Therefore, when sunglasses appear out of context, they can distract the viewer from the narrative flow, not because they're historically inaccurate or functionally unnecessary, but because they seem dissonant with the established tone and characterization. Consider the feeling of anachronism at the sight of sunglasses in The Godfather. Not even at the bright, sunny wedding in the beginning of the movie do sunglasses make an appearance. It's not until late in the movie, during the climax of Michael Corleone's Rise to Dawn, that sunglasses appear in any prominent way. That's when they show up in the form of a pair of Ray-Ban Wayfarers. The Wayfarers were introduced in 1952, and the events of this part of the movie takes place in the mid-1950s. Yet the character looks out of place, like he was ripped right out of the Blues Brothers. The Godfather is a film steeped in the traditions and values of the past, where each visual element is meticulously chosen to reflect the era. In this context, the sudden appearance of modern sunglasses is like a crack in the canvas. It's not just about historical accuracy, it's about maintaining the illusion, keeping afloat the carefully constructed world that the audience has been invited into. The sunglasses, in this case, become a symbol not of protection or style, but of dissonance, a visual cue that something is amiss. This contrasts with their use in Django Unchained, where the anachronistic sunglasses add to Django's character, symbolizing his defiance of the norms and expectations of the time. In conclusion, the bizarre sense of anachronism that sunglasses can evoke in film is not just a matter of historical accuracy or fashion. It's a reflection of how powerful even a simple accessory can be in visual storytelling. Thus, when sunglasses appear out of place, it's not just a fashion faux pas, it's a narrative discord, a visual symbol clashing with the story's established tone and era. In their simplicity, sunglasses can either seamlessly integrate into the fabric of a film or stand out starkly. In this way, sunglasses remind us that in cinema, even the seemingly most ordinary of objects can carry enormous importance.